The only real hope and change you'll ever get is from God. It's going to come from the Lord or it's not going to come at all. It's going to come when you admit that you can't do it and that you've got to have His help. I want to talk to you today about two Bible verses that that devil does not want you to know. The reason he doesn't want you to know these two verses is because these two verses will literally take you through this life and all the way through eternity. Satan is in the business of trying to portray God in a negative light. The horrible things he causes in this world, he blinds the eyes of people and gets them to point the finger at God. Now before I tell you what these two verses are, I want you to close your eyes. Now I want you to think of a circle and then I want you to place a dot in the middle of that circle. The world is the circle and you are the dot. Now outside of the circle, on one side, I want you to think of an innumerable number of angels, thousands upon thousands of holy angels. As far as your eyes can see, I want you to see angel upon angels, every angel that has ever been created. And now on the other side, I want you to think of every demon and unclean spirit that is on earth, and all of them unite in one place. I don't know how many spirit beings will be around the circle, but if all of them joined together and pleaded and begged God to stop loving you, God would say no. Let's focus on the angels. Think about it. If all of the angels stood before God and said to him, God, please stop loving him. Please stop loving her. God would say no. These are holy angels that have never sinned. They are called holy angels because they have never sinned. They could all point at you and say to God, please stop loving them. Stop loving these sinful people. You have done so much for them, but yet they don't appreciate you. They forget to give you all the glory, God, when you bless them, but they are the first to blame you when something bad happens. They don't follow your laws. They don't follow your commandments. They make a mockery out of righteousness and holiness. They place things before you, making those things their idols. They don't pray enough. God, please stop loving them. Do you know what God would say? He would say never. The two verses, the enemy will do anything to make sure you don't know or remember is Romans 8 verse 38 to 39. For I am persuaded, neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. God loves you. This verse answers the question, will God stop loving us? Would the devil convince him to stop loving us? Paul was sure of what will happen, and that is why he wrote that nothing could separate us from the love of God. The devil cannot succeed. Demons cannot succeed. Fallen angels from the pit of hell cannot succeed. They cannot stop God from loving you and me. The love of God for you is pure. One thing that you should know and hold on to is that the love of God doesn't know the end. God has no end. He is everlasting. He will always remain the same and will never change. In the same manner, the love of God is forever. How do we know this? 1 John chapter 4, verse 8. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. God himself is love. Love is the identity of God. It is the nature of God. When you see God, you have seen love. Love is what God is all about, because God is everlasting. The love in him is everlasting. What did he do with this everlasting love? Jeremiah 31 verse 4, The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yeah, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. I want us to understand that the everlasting love that God has in himself, he showed it to us. He loved us with the everlasting love. This is how much God loves you and me. This is how far he is willing to go to prove to you that he loves you. Why should you have it in mind that God doesn't love you? Why should you allow the devil to make you think God doesn't love you? If God never loved you, you would not have the assurance of heaven. If God doesn't love you, you would have been destroyed by the devil. But God, who has loved you with an everlasting love, helped you and protected you. Psalm 124 verse 2 to 3. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side when men rose up against us, then they had swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us. This is what that love can do to you. Why should you allow the situation you find yourself in today make you think God has stopped loving you? Many people do ask the question, and if God loves us truly, why 
as he sent people to hell. This question breaks my heart because people do not understand anything about the love of God. This is a question that people have been asking over the years. Why does God allow people to go to hell or send people to hell? God doesn't send people to hell. What you need to know is that God never created hell for mankind. God created mankind and placed him in the Garden of Eden. He did not create the mankind and place us in the lake of fire. God loves you and I. God placed us in Eden, in place that was amazing. Satan rebelled against God in the beginning and he was judged. Hell was created for the devil, Satan and his angels. Hell is not for human beings, it is created for the devil. If anyone goes to hell, God did not send them there. They chose that place. There is something that God gave us, and it is a great gift. That gift is called choice. We can choose anywhere you want to go, anything you want to be, anything you want to do. God has given us the ability to choose. You can choose where you want to go after death. We can see this in the book of Deuteronomy 30 verse 19. I call heaven and earth to record this day against you, but I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore choose life, that both thou and thy seed may live. We have to decide. You have the power to choose where you want to go. God will never send you to hell. It is you who will choose where you want to go. And you can do this through your actions here on earth. God loves you, and that love can never be stopped by the devil. God doesn't make mistakes, and you are not a mistake. So long you have lived with this feeling of rejection, as if you don't belong, but you do belong. You belong to God, and He cares about you more than you will ever know, more than you will ever understand. We often feel like there is no one there for us. We are living all alone. Family and friends have gone. We cannot speak to anyone about what we are aging through because we feel alone. People think being alone means there is no one around you, but that is not true. You can be in a room full of people and still feel alone because that room full of people don't know what you are going through. They don't know what you are experiencing. But there is one person who knows what you are going through, and that is God. There is one person who knows your pain, and that is God. He knows everything about you. He knows when you sit down and when you rise up. He knows every single one of your thoughts, even before you think it. You will never surprise Him. He knows what you are going to do before you do it. He knows all your desires. He knows what is in your heart. You have experienced empty promises from so many people. They promised they would never leave, but they left. They promised they would never forsake you, but they still did. I want to tell you today that you should never feel rejected because God loves you. You may be thinking that God has left you, just like everyone else. I want you to know that the last thing God will do is leave you alone. God will never leave you, for you continue feeling rejected. That is not how God works. The God that we serve, the true God says, that He has loved us with an everlasting love. He has shown us His loving kindness. Why should you be feeling down? Why should you be feeling like there is no hope for you? Why should you be feeling like God has abandoned you? Men may reject you. People may write you off. People may say to you that you are not qualified for a job. People may say you are too small to fight. Remember that even David was too small to fight Goliath, but he did not forget that God has not rejected him. He did not forget that God is with him. The moment you realize that God is always with you, that Goliath in your life will fall. That giant in your life will fall. It doesn't matter what people say about your height, about your looks, about your ability. It doesn't matter what your qualifications are. When you realize that God has not rejected you, their comments will never bother you. We often focus much on the rejection of people. Once they tell you that you cannot measure up, or when they tell you that you don't count, you dwell too much on these words, and you let it beat you down. Look at yourself, and look at what God is saying about you. He is saying that He has loved you with an everlasting love. I don't know if we know what everlasting means. It means eternity. It means it has no end. It means it is forever. The love of God for you knows nothing called end. Just because the man or woman left you and told you you are unlovable does not mean it is true. The devil is a liar. You are more than lovable. You in the eyes of the Lord are worth dying for. He chose you, but do you choose him? He loves you, but do you love him? When you were lost, he found you. 
When you were broken, he mended you. When you cried, he comforted you. You have no idea what you mean to God. He only wants the best for you. You are precious to him. He would never want to harm you. God would never steer you wrong. God is not the one out to get you. How could he be when he sent his only son to save you? God shines his light into your life. But all we ever do is run into the darkness. You chose to love a human more than him. And when they hurt you, he is the one who fixes you. When they lie to you, he is the one who holds the truth. And when they leave you, it is he who will always be there for you. God is the only constant we have in our lives. Even when you ignore him, he will still love you. Matthew chapter 22, verse 33 to 40. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law of the prophets. Love God with all your heart. Notice also in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers. It takes the grace of God to change us, folks. How can you be saved if you're not willing to repent? And the Lord Jesus Christ said, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish.